Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents pastor and evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome everybody today to the program. And we want to greet you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus and hope today that we can be a blessing to you with the good Word of God. Especially want to send a program out now to all of God's little children, whether you're home or on the road or maybe you're listening to our programs we have here on this station and different stations. We thank God for all of our viewers and listeners and especially now want to invite you, if you're around to where you have the Bible handy, to you study with us in these messages today. And we're going to be especially speaking concerning now the great victory that truly is in the Lord Jesus, and especially by understanding His will for our lives. Then children, I believe that God will increase His people with faith. And of course that faith comes by not only hearing the Word of God, but becoming a doer of it. And we want to dedicate the program now to you in the hospitals and nursing homes, and especially send a program out today to a couple good brothers that, that I talk to on the phone once in a while. And I want to send it out to Brother Lee if he's listening in in the Mount Vernon, I believe it is, hospital. And I also send it out to Brother Henry in Virginia near Princeton area, and all the people of God everywhere, but these two I appreciate. I get to talk to them once in a while. And we thank God for all of you, though, that listen to us and watch our programs. We appreciate you. And uh, Brother Lee Watkins, we're going to try our best to get down to be with him. And Lord willing, we're hoping we're going to get to be back over toward the Princeton area here, maybe for too long, but... Any way it goes, we thank God for all of His people that allow us to be with you. And also, I'm going to make this announcement now that if you by any chance can't get us by cable on Living Faith Television, if you have a uh, internet, you can click on their website, which is www.livingfaithtv.com. And uh, they have streaming video on their website. And you can watch a program all over the world. That's www.livingfaithtv.com. And uh, they have that streaming video. And our program's on Tuesday through Saturdays at 7 o'clock. I mean 6.30. Tuesday through Saturday at 6.30 in the evening to 7 o'clock. And uh, also it's on Sundays at 2.30. And of course here we're on in Kentucky in the Hazard area, WYMT, and their station also affiliated out of uh, near the Lexington area. I believe it's WKYT TV, KYPT I believe it is or something like that. But anyway, we thank God for all of His people. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the good Word of God. And ask the saints, if you got a Bible, turn with me to the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation. And I want to let you listen to some things now that the Bible teaches concerning the righteousness which is in the Lord Jesus. And that only comes now through the new birth. But first of all, turn with me to the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation. And I'll just go ahead and start about verse 1. John said, After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, 
and as a voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is, thank God, the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now children, what I first want to speak on today is concerning now what the Bible teaches about God granting to her, which is the bride, the Lamb's wife, that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now, this is what we need to understand that you can only receive this fine linen by the new birth. You can't get it from the feasts of the Jews or the ways of the law because we're going to show you now what the Bible teaches about the righteousness for God's people today. And if you remember now, when Jesus told Nicodemus in the book of St. John chapter 3 that he must be born again to enter God's kingdom. Now, children, as God is my helper, you need to recognize by studying these men and understand that the kingdom of God, that is what God gives to you that represents the righteousness of saints. And the reason that is, is because it's not an earthly kingdom. And it is not the material things, and neither is the kingdom meat and drink. As Paul said in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is righteousness, thank God, and peace and joy, but only in the Holy Ghost. And that's what I want us to recognize. And you stay with me now here. I want to first of all take you back here to some of the things that Jesus now began to teach to the Jewish people while he was here upon earth. But also now he spoke to a little Samaritan woman. And I want you to listen what Jesus began to tell the little woman at the well in here in the book of St. John chapter 4. Let me just go ahead and read this to you in the book of St. John chapter 4 and verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples... He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Now listen to verse 4. And he, Jesus, must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shachar, near the partial of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, now this is while Jesus was here in the flesh, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away into the city, notice now, to buy meat. So Jesus was left alone with this little woman. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Now children, back at the time Jesus was here in the flesh, he had not died yet. 
And of course, there was a difference between the Jew and Gentile, and that's the reason Jesus went to that cross and tore down that middle wall. Now, us Gentiles, as you know, were a people. But we were without a hope and without God until Jesus died. And the Jews now, they would not mingle or mix. And of course, she was a Samaritan woman. And even Jesus had forbidden the apostles to preach to that city as of yet. But now, this little woman, when Jesus was there at the well of Jacob, she came to draw water. And of course, Jesus asked her for a drink of water. And she said, how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Now, of course, a Jew is represented as the Hebrews. And one thing I want you to understand is we're going further. Now, we do still see a people in supposedly Christianity today, that still want to make a difference between Jew and Gentiles now, even though Jesus died and tore down that differences. And if you remember, we're going to get into these things. Jesus, when He gave His life, then He became the door not only to the house of Israel and Judah, but also to us Gentiles. And in the book of St. John chapter 10, when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And then Jesus went on to say that he that enters in by the door, thank God, is the shepherd of the sheep, and to him the porter openeth, and the sheep will hear his voice, and a stranger they're not going to follow. And if you'll notice also, in that 10th chapter of John, when Jesus said, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, representing the Jews, them also must I bring. And there will be one fold and one shepherd. And that meant now that Jesus had to tear down the differences. Now listen to me. And he is no wise a respecter of persons. He makes no difference today, difference between the Jew and Gentile. And this is what Jesus was letting that little woman know, that if you knew who I am and the gift of God, you would understand that I can talk to you. See, she was asking Jesus, how is it that thou being a Jew asked to drink of me which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Well, I want you to listen to Jesus now. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, we know the living water definitely represents the Holy Ghost. And in John 7, Jesus told them at the great day of feast that if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Now, children, Jesus was not only God's gift to mankind which simply meant God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But now, if you'll notice, He had no lineage as far as a father by David or Joseph or Abraham. Now, Jesus, and we're going to be shown as we go along, was truly before Abraham. He was the God of Abraham. And if you'll notice in St. John chapter 1, the Bible said that he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, which were the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and the Bible said his own received him not. And then John 1 and 14 declared he was the Word made flesh which was God manifest in the flesh. 
Now, by understanding this, Jesus would let her know that if you knew who I am, you would ask me and I'd give you the living water. And the living water is definitely the gift of the Holy Ghost. And believe it or not, the only way you can receive it today is through Jesus. You can't get this out of man. I mean, God can anoint men to lay hands on people and pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost and He'll give it to them. But no normal human person can give the Holy Ghost. That only comes by God Himself. And that's why Jesus said through the mouth of Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians 12 that by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body. See, by the Holy Ghost. And if you remember, even John the Baptist, and you don't find a greater prophet. But John said, I indeed baptize you with water. So did the rest of the apostles. But the one coming after me, John said, preferred before me, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire because Jesus was the gift that God gave to the world, which was the birth. And this is a great understanding that God's people need to really seek after. But Jesus was letting her know that if you would have asked me, I would have given you living waters. Now watch this. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Come on. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Talking about Jacob's well. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst But the water that I shall give him, thank God, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, that's what Jesus was telling that little woman there. Inside of me, him, was that living water. And it could only be given now after his death and resurrection. But yet he told her, if you knew this gift, You'd ask me and I'd give it to you. Now, you study these things out because it's important that we understand you have to receive and believe the Word of God before the true living waters can be given to you. Now, there is many spirits out here, but not everyone is given by the Lord. There's only one spirit that God will give. And children, as God is my helper, that spirit that God gives is nothing but total spirit of truth. And God must be, no getting around it, worship in His spirit and in His truth. And when He does this to you, comes in your life, then I'm going to show you He's clothing you with a righteousness. Now listen to me. That's not given by the will of man, but it's given by the Lord. And that's your born again experience. Now watch what Jesus told her. Listen to him. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thine husband. And Jesus said, In that saidest thou truly. Now watch this. The woman said unto him, Now this is that little woman of Samaria, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. See, A prophet of God could tell things. And Jesus told that little woman that you've been married five times and the one you've got now 
is not your husband, and you said that in truth. But watch this. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say, you say, that is in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now listen to me, children. She's saying the same thing that most of your preachers say today. They're all teaching that in the future, we're all going to go up to Jerusalem and worship God. And Jerusalem will be the holy city of God in the future. You know what, children, I'm going to be showing you. People is so dedicated to this earthly Middle East. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of events is happening there. But they are totally forgetting the mother of a sow which is above you. And that's that new Jerusalem. I know without a doubt that's the one you better be a looking to. But listen to what Jesus told her now. She said our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Did you hear him there? The hour comes when you will neither in this mountain, come on, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You know not, or you worship you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Now listen to verse 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now children, this is the mystery people need to understand. Most people are taught and believe that you do have to be born again and receive the Spirit to be a Christian. But do we forget the way of worshiping God? See? Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man comes unto the Father. That's what he said. But by me in John 14. And we have to believe him according to the Scriptures before the real water of life can have an effect in our life. Now, when Jesus told this little woman that you worship you know not what. We know what we worship. Salvation is of the Jews. Now that wasn't saying, wasn't saying that Jesus was a natural Jew. But that was saying that salvation came first to the sheep of Israel, and it did. And the little woman was a Samaritan, and they would worship in idolatry or just worship this or that way. But Jesus was letting her know that salvation is of the Jews and you better believe it did begin on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, but now it's the Holy Ghost that God must, must be worshipped in spirit and truth. And this is what Jesus told her. Now watch this. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And children, we've got to recognize there is a true worshiping of God today. And this little woman at the well, a Samaritan woman, right at Jacob's well, told Jesus that our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And then said, now you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Well, children, Jesus told her that God must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And that spirit and truth could not be really given to the people until first Jesus 
gave it to the apostles and gave them the understanding to what to preach to the world. And then only could we accept salvation that began with the Jews. Now, I want you to go with me to the seventh chapter of the book of St. John right quick. And let me show you what Jesus told them here at the great day of the feast. And this is something that we need to understand, children, because Jesus is that true bread that came down from heaven. Now, listen to it out of the book of St. John chapter 7 here. And when you get time, you can read it all, but drop down to verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, see, one of the feasts of the Jews, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, now here it is, he that believeth on me as the Scripture has said. And the Scriptures is especially the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. What was written of this Messiah? And Jesus said, He that believes on me, as the Scripture said, not contrary, but as the Scripture teaches. See? And then He said, watch this, Out of His belly shall flow rivers of living water, but this spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Now watch this. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. See, it was going to happen in their future. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified, which simply means he had to raise from the dead and enter back into heaven in glory and then he could bring this to pass that them that believe on him, as the scripture said, the spirit would be given. Now children, I see my time is about up for this part. Stay with me. I want to show you concerning the righteousness and how God is no respecter of persons, but we have to fear him and believe on him through this New Testament. So stay with me. Write us in any prayer requests and we appreciate you. And we have our church services Wednesdays and Saturday nights at 7. On Sundays at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So come out and be with us. And we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. And may God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I want to welcome everybody back today to the program and appreciate the Lord for the privilege of being with you. And I'm going to speak a little bit today out of the book of Romans, the ninth and 10th and maybe even 11th chapter, but... We was on our last program, I hope you were tuned in, concerning now the little Samaritan woman that told Jesus that our fathers worship in this mountain, but yet you say in Jerusalem is where men ought to worship. But now Jesus told her that you worship you know not what. We know what we worship 
for salvation is of the Jews. And Jesus let her know that God is a spirit. And thank God they that...